This channel is for educational purposes only. Um, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investments. Um, and there is inherent risk in trading. So it's speculative. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, doing a few short side trades and showing the different aspects that take place, especially during a bull market. I think you have to have a slightly different approach when the market is strong and the conditions look good, especially on the monthly and the weekly timeframes. Uh, there are trades out there, but it's a little bit more work on the short side. So I just got to, I'm going to show you kind of how I think it needs to be handled right now. And I'm going to use two examples for that. Uh, one is a trending example, uh, at least on the minor timeframes. And then the other would be a, a divergent, like a reversion to the mean type of, uh, of a trade. So uh, let's get into this right now. Uh, I'm going to start with ROP. Um, I've got the four time frames up to start. I'm going to start zeroing in on the smaller time frames, but I wanted to make this point. So, um, you know, there was a trade off the daily time frame using the hourly as a trigger uh, about a week or two ago. And if you look at what the bigger time frames look like, I mean, overall, the monthly is still in an uptrend, uh, 18 above the 40 and both lines rising. And we actually had some support there, uh, not that far away at 385 or so. Um, the weekly time frame was more of a neutral pattern, looked more like a range trading pattern. And I think you want to keep that in mind when you're looking for targets, potential downside uh, for your trades here. So um, this will make more sense as, as I get into the details. So uh, let me just zero in on the daily chart because this is really the trade time frame. This is the time frame that is showing uh, what we're looking for. And uh, what I like to look for is a new low in price, taking out a prior bottom with some strength. And if you look at the size of this big red bar, they're showing real good strength to the downside. Uh, that happened on earnings. So I'm, I'm happy to see that the earnings has passed us. And then we can look for trading opportunities after that. Um, also notice the big red spike in negative DI, um, even though ADX was not high or strong, um, coming out of this kind of consolidation area, a lot of times we'll get the red peak without um, any strength really in the uh, uh, ADX line. So that's okay with me. Um, but if you notice what happened after that, we got a, a rally of several days, higher lows, and uh, it ended up being a pinch play. First cross to the downside, uh, uh, to the downside of the zero line. And then we got a little pinch where uh, the MACD line pinched upward towards the signal line without crossing over. And while that was taking place, we got several higher bottoms taking place up towards the 18 on this time frame. So that's a trigger. It's right out of my book. Um, I call it a pinch play. Um, I like the confirmation of the negative DI. I like the confirmation of this big uh, red bar to the downside. And I also like the fact that we're taking out uh, this whole area. Now, when I look at this pattern, and again, if we go back and look at the weekly, I'm realizing that I really don't have a significant amount of room. I'm only playing for a trade down into this zone, really just looking for one leg to the downside. It's not like I'm looking for a trending play. Like if I get long a stock in today's bull market, I'm not necessarily looking for just a, a three to five day move. I'm looking for something that can trend for a while, uh, potentially. And so I'm not necessarily going to get in and get out. But when I look at this pattern on a, on a, a daily and an hourly, I think there's a trade here. The way I would handle it would be different um, in terms of taking profits. I would be much more aggressive taking profits as this moves three to five days in my favor because I know there's pretty significant support uh, from the longer term chart uh, starting probably around 385. So um, what I would do with this, so I've got my, my daily pattern in place. Then I'm going to go down to the hourly and I'm going to look for my opposing trend signal or a buy signal that fails, which is the which is basically the phrase I use in my book. So uh, what I'm looking for here is where the 18 actually crosses above the 40, and um, and then what we're we're looking for a, a time where. Uh, price kind of comes into the zone and tries to come out and then actually drops down below both moving averages. Um, I like to see MACD confirmation with it coming down through its signal line. Um, I also like to see a big uh, negative spike 
in uh, red DI and a negative peak here. And then if you look at the rally, it was a lower peak. This peak, which was based on the buyers, is lower than this peak. So I, I view that as being a, uh, a, you know, a, a good setup for a short trade. This is really right out of my book. I'm using the two time frame setup. I'm only doing it on the short side now rather than the long side. Um, if we go to the next, next example, I want to look at this uh, Ingersoll RAN. And so um, this is a little bit different because it actually looks somewhat like the pattern I talked about in the uh, Spider on uh, Friday. Uh, because you have a low ADX reading. As this is moving up, you're getting this low ADX reading as it moves to a new high right here in uh, early to mid-January, and ADX can't get above 25. And then I've, I've boxed, boxed out this area, obviously, and I want to show where you'd start looking at this on the hourly. And just looking at what took place, we had pretty good green uh, buyers on the way up on this rally. And that would be where this is crossing to the upside, where it's not showing good strength on, a, uh, on an ADX basis on the daily chart. Um, and also, we're getting a MACD divergence as well. So both of those are taken into account. And I'm sort of looking at, okay, this has the potential for a trade back down towards the 18-week line. And so I'm not necessarily wanting to do this trade off of a daily chart because the risk-reward is probably not all that great. It'd probably be like one-to-one -to, -one to get it down towards the 18-week. So if I'm going to do this trade, I have to do it off the hourly. And the way I would go about doing that is I'd be looking for some kind of a sell signal on this time frame in this range. And the way it played out is it, it, it didn't really give me a signal early on. And then it dropped down and both moving averages dropped. But there really was no significant sign uh, based on red DI or any kind of an ADX signal. I guess you could have looked at this as a... Um, as a uh, uh, pinch play to the downside, but it was pretty sloppy. And so what the, when I see this sometimes, I'm, lo I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, this is actually low ADX. This is a low ADX pattern forming. And what I would be looking for is a break of support, a pretty definitive one. And in that case, it would have been on this bar to the downside here. And I would have placed a stop up above this area here. And then I'd be looking for my target, which again is somewhere around the 18 week, maybe a little bit lower, but somewhere around the 18 week, uh, which at that time would have been right around 42. So if I'm getting in, uh, let's say at 45, 45 and a quarter, something like that, um, I've got to stop up at like 46, 46 and a quarter. Uh, 46 and a half. Maybe I'm risking a dollar or a dollar and a quarter. And then I'm playing for a move down towards the 18 week line, which is in the next real support area. And if you notice, we have good momentum characteristics on the weekly. So there's no reason for me to believe that this is going to break down through that. So I think that's how I definitively have to define this trade. In this instance, it actually get, gapped in my favor and I would have been taking profits on this gap down. It ended up overrunning the 18 week a little bit, but that ended up being the support area and where it started to rally from. So um, I hope you understand how I'm trying to define these trades. We've got two different types of trades. First, the Roper, which is the two time frame setup. Uh, let me just get this to, so where the box is, I had a strong move to the downside and a rally up towards the 18. I mean, this is a good quality pattern. The problem I have is I don't really have a trend. It's not in my favor on the upper time frame. So I know I can take this trade, but I have a definitive target in mind. It's not like I'm going to get in and hope for the best and just hope that it's going to go through all this support uh, that it has in the mid 380s. Um, I have a definitive entry. I'm going to use off of a trigger here. And uh, when I get in this trade off the, uh, um, the failure setup, I'm going to put a stop in, you know, somewhere above this little last rally area. And, and then again, I'm going to have a target uh, where support is coming in. And so depending on how aggressive you do, you do have some room based on this last decline. It could be all the way down to 367 if you want. Um, I would probably be looking at this prior low of uh, 380 as a pretty high probability target. 
Um, and so I'd be marking that down. And, and the way this program works, if I go and put in a little box here, it shows up. It shows up on this time frame. Uh, so I can see exactly what my target is. So I know if I'm getting in somewhere in this range here and I got my stop here, and I might actually use a stop above this prior peak, um, then I know I've got a target here. And what I want to do is I want to figure out the difference between my entry my and how much I'm risking and then make sure that I have room at least two to one to get down to this target area. If I don't have two to one, I don't really want to do the trade. So that's kind of how I would look at these trades. Even if you're doing a divergent trade, you want to figure out the same thing. You want to make sure you have room to the target on the next higher time frame and figure out if you have at least two to one. If you don't have two to one, I would recommend not doing the trade. Um, so anyway, that's kind of how I'd handle ha uh, doing short trades in a uh, in a bear market environment. It would be different if you had a trending environment to the downside where the overall market is down, then you can play for bigger targets. Um, anyway, uh, hit that like button and uh, I'll see you next time.